Hi everybody! Happy Technique Tuesday! I'm Lauren Chatama and my company is Intentional Acting and I'm hired by working actors who are getting passed over and they don't know why and what they want is to book more work and build a reputation of being an in-demand actor. And one of the tools that you need in order to book more work and build the reputation of being an in-demand actor is being vulnerable. Now the thing about vulnerability and learning to be vulnerable and creating vulnerability within your work is that you need to know how to keep it safe for yourself. How do you stay safe so that you can go, so you can take risks and go places that maybe you wouldn't go because you're doing this in front of other people. Either you're doing it in front of a camera or if you're doing it in front of a class, you're doing it in an environment where other people are watching you and potentially judging you. And so what I understand about our brain is our brain will instantly go into self-consciousness, which makes us act, and it doesn't allow us to be vulnerable. So what's first important in creating vulnerable performances is to create a safe space to do that. So whether that be in a reading with a, another actor or in an, your apartment shooting a self-tape or in a class or on a Zoom class. You have, to, you have to be really clear for yourself and you have to be really listening to yourself to know, does this feel safe for me? Is this a safe person to be around? Do I, am I safe in front of the camera with that? And you have to listen to it because sometimes what happens, and I've seen this happens, is actors are like, well, I wanna go deep. And so therefore it may not be safe. So I'm just going to throw it and put it out there. And then they are either, they feel so vulnerable that they kind of run away from the whole experience or they risk being judged or criticized or put in a position that could hurt them or harm them. And acting and being creative is not about re-traumatizing ourselves. It's about healing ourselves. At least that's my opinion. And so I've been reading from a great acting teacher that if you haven't read this book, you really need to. And you can see I've marked it up a bit. Uta Hagen, Respect for Acting. And I want to share with her because I was reading from her this morning. And I want to share with you a, like just a paragraph that she talked about exactly that. And that's what kind of spurred on this idea. So Uta Hagen, and she's this is in The Actor, and she's talking about emotional memory. And that's usually where we're kind of reaching for that vulnerability is if you're going into substitution, maybe you're using emotional memory or you're doing sense memory and you're, and you're, or, and even if you're not using a substitution or maybe you're trying to go into the, maybe the emotional role of a character, you're going in to your personal self and your emotions, your feelings and your world. You're diving in there to, to, either find something new or bring something deeper. And so that's what she's talking about right here. And in that she has a warning and I love this. She says, I must warn you at this point to avoid the examination of any past experience which you have never talked about or wanted to talk about. Here you will be on dangerous ground because you will not know what can happen to you and without an understanding or a degree of objectivity to the experience, it is useless to you artistically. There are teachers who actually force actors into dealing with something buried, their response to the death of a parent or the trauma of a bad accident. What results in hysteria or worse is, in my opinion, anti-art. That's Uta Haga's opinion. She's calling that anti-art. And she, she goes on to say, we are not pursuing psychotherapy. If you feel mentally sick or disturbed in need of it, by all means, go to a trained doctor or a therapist, but not to an acting teacher. And I, I love that because I have been in classes and I have seen teachers who have, I think, re-traumatized some students and brought thing and, and forced them to bring something to the light and when they're not quite ready to. And I always say in my class, because safety is the number one thing that's important to my class, that, that an actor feels safe to take risks and to go deeper. So that again is going back to, is this the teacher? Is this the space? Is this the class? 
and trusting your instincts. And if something, just this little tiny thing says, I don't know, then move on. Just move on. It's not worth it to you. So that's the number one thing in my class that I create this safe environment where people can take risks and take chances and listen deeply. But at the same time, I don't ask them to be, don't, you don't have to tell me the history of it. Because one, I'm not a therapist, right? And two, I love this thing that I heard from an actor, John Cusack. And he talks about how he may use emotion, emotional memory or a sense memory or even a substitution but he doesn't dive and and but he doesn't divulge that particularly to the press or to an interview. He doesn't give the details of his and his private life. He keeps very private. Thus, we don't see him on all these magazines. We don't hear about him. We don't know about him. He manages and he works hard to create and keep a private life. And and he says he does that so that when we watch him on camera, we don't see John Cusack in his, all his life there. We see the character and we watch that story. But that that personality, because that's something Stanislavski says, is you can't steal another person's soul. So every actor, you're always using, every time you're creating a character, you're using some part of yourself. It has to come from your soul. That's what Stanislavski says. And so, and, and so for him to go into his soul, he's just still keeping it private so that we don't see that, on the, we don't go, oh, that's John Cusack and oh, all this. And a great example, an opposite example of that to me was when I saw Mr. and Mrs. Smith with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. And I'll never forget, I spent the whole movie just thinking, oh, this is how they got together. Oh, is this how Brad, this is, he's cheating on Jen. And like, and, and that's all that could go through my mind. I wasn't watching these two actors play these roles in the movie. And you may have had a different experience and that's totally fine. I'm just sharing mine. And, and I know that even when I saw The Last Duel and it was the first movie back of Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, you know that scene where Matt Damon gets on his knees and at the very beginning to Ben Affleck. And they even said, they were very aware that they didn't want the world to be watching that movie and thinking, oh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. And so they had very few scenes together. They kept it very simple and that was one for the exact purpose that they wanted people to see the story, not their personal lives. But their personal lives were, in, were there to support that story. So I hope that that, that differential is and distinction is making sense to you. If it doesn't for any reason, please write it in the comments or message me, um, lauren at intentionalacting.com. You can email me and let's talk about this because I think it's a really important distinction, which is how can you use your personal life without exposing your personal life? How can you, um, so that that will keep you safe. And that's one of the other ways to keep you safe. A third thing, so the first one was, you know, really trust your instincts on even the director, the people that you're working with, and do you feel safe in that environment to be vulnerable? Um, two is don't divulge your personal stuff, like let that be yours, because then we just see the fuel for the fire, we just see the fuel for the performance without going, oh, you know what that is, without it being too, you know what, it's personal without having to do with your personality. That's the distinction right there. It's personal without showing personality of yours. We want the personality of the character. And the third way is, is one of my nine questions. It's the ninth question, which is, how do I use this scene to benefit myself? Or how do I use this scene to heal myself? And I, that came from my own experience and of times where I realize when I look back in my best performances, somehow in that scene and in that scene work, there was something that, that, that benefited me, that I grew as a human being. I had my own little therapy by doing that role playing or working in that scene. I, um, 
I remember one where I was engaged to, to a man that I really didn't want to be engaged to. And when I did this scene in class, I did Nola from a doll, Nora from a doll's house and I had to take the ring off, it gave me the courage to do something that I didn't have in my real life. And that's where that ninth question comes from. So, and then I eventually did break up with him. So how can you be intentional about it and think in advance, like, wow, I'm reading this scene. Is there a way that I can heal or benefit from this scene by doing it? you know, doing it this time, maybe I can think forward and be intentional about it. And sometimes something comes up and sometimes it doesn't. But if my intention is to heal myself and I use that to do the scene, it helps to stay safe. It will keep you safe. And you're doing it, the scene for all the right reasons. So remember, vulnerability is a really important tool for an actor, a really important product that they have to create. So how do you do that and keep yourself safe? Know the environment that you're doing it, whether it's a class or reading with another actor or working with a director. Are you in a safe environment? Does that feel right for you? Trust that and trust what your instincts tell you to do about that. Two, as Uta Hagen says, maybe you need more objectivity to the, pro, to, the, to, the, to the thing that you're using, the event that you're using, and not using acting class for psychotherapy, or going to an acting class, expecting an acting teacher to be that. And three, try my ninth question. How can I use this scene to heal myself? Be intentional, try it in advance. So there are some three great ways. If you have others or more or want to discuss any of them with me, please leave a comment or send me a message or email me lauren at intentionalacting.com. I do have classes coming up. They're starting on September 13th and September 12th. And if that's something that you're, you want to know more about or you're interested in finding out more, then please feel free to set up an appointment with me at discoverintentionalacting.com. That's discoverintentionalacting.com. It'll be a free 45 minute session and we'll talk about what you need to take your career to the next level and see if intentional acting is the right fit for you. So happy Technique Tuesday. Go be vulnerable safely. <laughs>